different setup from what we're used to. My lady wife has very kindly allowed me to uh, borrow her uh, little selfie stick thing, and so uh, I'll be using that. It's uh, looks, looks different from what it used to. Starting a little bit early, we always used to anyway, so it's what we're going to do. And I need to just pause myself here. It's much easier to actually use two devices to run one of these than just use one. Uh, Tom Beresford says, uh, good evening. Uh, good evening to you as well, sir. Let me just pop the chat up so we can, we can see. Mr. Alan Simpson says, Gordon's alive. Um, who is Gordon, sir? I'm not exactly sure what you uh, what you mean, I'm afraid. We're not going to go on very long this evening because I don't have as much um, energy as I normally would do. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be okay for half an hour or so, I'm sure. Uh, Simon from Lot 76 Cars says, uh, glad to see you recovering. Yes, it's been a, it's been a while, um, but we're getting there now. Not having any alcohol this evening because um, it's something I'm not really kind of uh, doing at the moment because it tends to sort of hinder recovery process and things, unfortunately. Um, Mr. Simpson says the Flash Gordon reference. I've not seen the, the 1980 Flash Gordon film for quite a while, I'm afraid. I've not seen that for a while. Uh, good to see you back. Well, you know, we are we are back <laughs> um, after a fashion. Richard Hatter says good evening. Good evening to you as well, sir. I'm actually quite surprised having done this at quite short notice how many people actually have turned up. Uh, Mark from Bad Book says, uh, good to see you back. Well, we are we are around and it's uh, not exactly how it used to be, but uh, there we go. Mark Passad says, uh, good to see you, sir. Yes, sir, well, we're here. And uh, it's like it used to be during the old lockdown days when we used to do these things quite regularly. Mr. Coleman, I think at some point, is going to join us. Um, I think someone else is going to as well. And there he is, Mr. Coleman, my British mechanic. Hello for the second time today. The reason why Mr. Coleman has uh, said that is because uh, the first long trip that uh, I've undertaken since um, since I got ill, it was around 28th, 29th of September, uh, was to go and see Mr. Coleman. It's a scheduled trip we've had in, um, in the diary for some time to get the exhaust done on the car. Um, and my lady wife came with me. Uh, she also got the virus just before I did. And so, um, you know, she's also been going through the same sort of process, although she didn't have it quite as severely as I did, um, but we're still sort of recovering from what's been going on. Um, we did make it. A, it's a very strange thing, sort of driving along, having had this thing, because you feel very disconnected from what's going on. It's There's an extra load disconnection in everything. Um, the sort of hearing, vision, just everything you feel and touch, it's very strange. Um, but, uh, you know, we made it and that was fine. Um, my lady wife has been looking after me, which has been very kind. I wouldn't have been able to go to see Mr. Coleman yesterday and come back today without her. Um, Thomas West says, good evening, good evening to you, sir. So when we bought the Rover, which would have been June 2020, one of the things Mr. Coleman pointed out to me is that it was going to need a new exhaust at some point. The catalytic converter on the car is actually the original and they are quite valuable on the Ford V6 Ravers. That's, that's fine, but uh, I had to get a new centre section and the back box. The centre section is quite easy because a lot of Rover 45s and MTZs have the same centre section. 
but the batter box is unique to a 45d6 saloon and um, it was a strange process trying to find one there are 70 of those cards left on the road and so you can imagine if you want to find a back box for if it's such a, a rare car was a bit difficult and it actually was but strangely enough we found one and it's actually cheaper than an MG ZS 180 bat box. You can use a ZS 180 bat box, but what you have to do is modify the tailpipe right at the end to point in the to point in the right direction because the rear bumpers on a ZS 180 and a 45 V6 aren't the same. So that's something that, in say, if I still have the car in four or five years time, that we might consider. But it's you know. For now it's all fixed and uh, there were a couple of unique exhaust gaskets I needed and so Mr Colburn went down to a place this morning that's owned by a friend of his and fitted the exhaust on the ramp. I do have some pictures of it although there's not, there's not any video of it. Um, the car actually is running a lot better with the new exhaust system. Um, I think I'm getting better fuel economy as well. There is more power. The only thing is, it doesn't make the same noise. It's a lot quieter, which if you're doing sort of long motorway journeys is better. But it doesn't quite have the same distinctive noise it used to. But really that's better because the, the bat box was on its last legs. It wasn't a very old one, I think it was a 2015. So they don't last particularly long. Um, but it's now running better. And. Um, Yes, yeah, so that's that's that really. So Thomas Ware says evening. Uh, Rover Joe says hello. So I hope you're doing well, improving from the virus. Um, yes, a lot better than I was three weeks ago. I can assure you that's better. Uh, Ravens Claude said welcome back, sir. Thank you. Yes, it's been a little while. Simon the Lock seventy six cars said, have you seen the new MG ZS EV? With a 273 mile range, it looks like a big upgrade. Yes, of course I have. Of course I have, yes, that's a, that's a given with that kind of thing. We do have plans for things like that, don't worry. DBT says, good evening. Evening to you, sir. Uh, Mr Simpson says, glad to see the, the uh, duo with Coleman and Lloyd reunited. Yes, we were reunited. Uh, Reverend Joe says he's going to be doing the uh, Civic um, 1.8 VTI, same shape as uh, the 445Z. They call those either the Swindon Civic or the Civic 5 door, although it's a bit of a misnomer because there's also the Aero Deck on that platform, and they both are very closely related to things like the EG6 and EG4 Honda Civic from the early 90s. It's actually one part that's completely the same. All the way through from 2000, from an EG Civic all the way through to 2004 Rover 45, and that's the vent on top of the dash. They're absolutely identical. Um, but the 1.8 Civic VTI, that is a crazy car. They are um, very very powerful. Um, oh, Joe says it's based off Honda Demani. Says the Honda Demani wasn't sold in America. Uh, there was a variant of an Acura, which was quite similar to that, sold I think in Canada, but the Damani was not ever sold in America. Um, it says, do you find the drawing distance difficult on your Yes, it is very, it's very, it's weird. Um, the first bit of driving I did was probably just over a week ago. It was very, very, very strange. Just everything's dampened doesn't feel quite um quite the same uh today was um day was a bit easier actually but my lady wife uh, although she's not 100 percent quite yet she was very helpful to me kind of being there she could have done some of the driving as well but it wasn't necessary in the end uh roger says that was it not no but the demand was never sold in america you need to sort of uh Look at the sort of variant of it. Uh, I think it was the first time it was done was was, was an Acura in um, 
Canada. Um, ideally, I want to either take the Civic or the Rover 200 to the next festival of the Unexceptional. You don't even really need to book that sort of thing in. I mean, you can just turn up. Either is, either is absolutely fine because you're with a well the same, same kind of um, a year range to take one uh, to there. I mean, I, I could probably take the 45 there and it'll be fine. Uh, Peter Headley says, the B18 engine with 168 horsepower in a 1.8 VTI is a gem. Yes, I think they're pretty crazy. Um, Alan Simpson, did you lose your sense of smile and taste so I go back? I don't really want to go too much into this kind of stuff because um, this is a car channel. Um, but yes, I I did lose my sense of smell. My sense of taste really hasn't... I, my sense of taste has come back. My sense of smell, if anything, isn't really working properly at the moment. It just it's very common with the virus and things. Uh, sorry to hear you've been a bit of soon. Yes, well, that's okay, don't worry. Lots of the reviews were recorded. I think the latest one I recorded that's yet to be released was around 20th of September. So um, the ones you're seeing on the channel were recorded a long, long time ago. Long, long time ago. Uh, Rather, Joe says, I went in the 200 this year, night for red. Yes, yes, I know, I remember that one. That was uh, quite an event, the festival, really unexceptional. As with a lot of the other people who you would have seen on, on YouTube, people like uh, me and Seabrook and um, staff from My Driver Classic and and also uh, Mr. Richardson the Furious Driving. I am. I have got tickets for the NEC as well. Um, I booked those in about October 2020. The only thing I've made a mistake of doing is uh, actually um, not booking enough days over a year ago. So I'm going to have to correct that. But I have actually booked that in. Mr. Coleman as well is coming. He will be there with one of uh, his cars. So it'll be an interesting event, and there shall be much shambolic shuffling going on. Rover Joe says, I noticed the R8200 and the Civic have the same rear floor pan and well wheel. There are a lot of shared components between the R8s and what's called the HHR um, design, which is the, the, the next one. They're very, very similar. You can interchange all the wheels and sometimes the brakes and things as well. On those, they're all very similar. Uh, Mr. Simpson, just seeing you here and all returns well soon. So get back to cars. What do you think of Mr. Richard's new purchase? Mr. Coleman and I have actually been in discussion with Mr. Richardson about about that particular car. Um, Mr. Richardson um, knows how rare they are. He's actually had that car, I think, quite a long time. Or rather, he bought it a while ago, and before picking it up, Mr. Coleman is an absolute expert in anything to do with sort of K-series, KV6, um, things like that, along with, amongst other things. And um, we've been sort of talking with him about it. Um, and uh, yes, sort of weighing up the viability of what he's going to do and how he's going to do it. It's interesting because it's a very rare car. It's like a 200 BRM, but but, but rarer. Um, so, yes, it's interesting, really. Mr. Uh, Coleman's just confirming that he will be at the NEC, which is wonderful. He's going to be doing a lot of things there. Uh, Richard Howlett will be seeing a test of the MG6. We did a test of the MG6, actually, in July 2020. Uh, which is a different one. The MG6 that you would have seen in um, in, in Swinton, I don't think we'll be testing that because I, I've already tested a pre facelift one. Um, Rover Joe says, I'm going to have to sort some welding out on the Civic. The front jacking points have to rot out. Yes. 
Mr. Colwell and I were having a look underneath um, my car, just some pictures. I, I wasn't there, but he showed me what the exhaust looked like before and after. And there are there are a lot of um, sort of areas on a 45 or a 400 HHR or Swindon Civic that that like to rust, and a lot of them, if it's not the immobilizer type of thing or the head gasket or um, things like that, a lot of it is just the rust on, underneath the car. And um, I'm sure Mr. Coleman will advise you sort of as to that. I had the rear cross members um, just uh, sort of tidied up slightly today um, because that is uh, that's another area that goes and the, the, the underneath the front passenger floor and all sorts of things. Um, but uh, I think mine's going to be okay. It's a lot of things to check for when you're buying a... Um, Buying one of those, but lots of things to check on most cars. Um, Stuart Smith says, you to describe enjoyed the Montego Countryman video. Yes, Montego Countryman was a big surprise, actually, because I didn't know they they made those with carburetors as late as 1991. And um, I heard from Mr. Coleman that Montegos often have quite a lot more power than they're, they're advertised with that engine and that thing absolutely flew it absolutely flew that montego um it's really fast um and the power steering and that nice honda gearbox in it it's a very nice car to drive the only thing is you do get a vibration on the dashboard at third gear at 30 which is really annoying either you go up a gear or you slow down or something to get rid of it but apart from that superb car uh car ravioli says evening evening sir uh dbt says what's your favorite volvo model out of 740 240 940 do you know i've tested all three of those cars on no budget reviews did you know that I've tested all of those um it's a very difficult thing to say because when I was growing up, my mother had a 240 from 1990 to 2001. So, although I'm very familiar with the other two, and there's a couple of other Volvos I've also tested that that you haven't um, mentioned there, um, I have really have a sort of affinity for the 240s, even if perhaps they're not the best of those three, although Mr. Common will tell you, I'm sure. Um, but I, it's difficult to say. Peter Headley says, My first car was an EK uh, three-door 1.5 LS Civic. Yes, I know the exact one you mean. It was very good. It's a shame they all got an Anders Ball Racer Brigade. Yes, they either rusted or they were modified. And the prices of, of, of things like EGs and the EK hatches now is ridiculous. I tested an EG4 um, Civic on no-budget reviews last year. And at the time, that car was bought for under a thousand pounds. You can't buy one in that condition for less than about two and a half to three now. Absolutely insane. Uh, Rover Joe says, "Yes, the HHRs love to rust if you if you let them." Unfortunately, that's the, it's the case with a lot of cars of that era. They're no worse or no better than anything else. I mean, Mark 1 Focuses do it. Mark 1 Begans do it. So, so many. Um, Civic is just having grass for 10 years. Underneath it's not pretty. Yeah, that's not very good for them. The driver's side still has come off along with Rear Arch. Classic um, rust spot on that design of car is, is, the, is the sill. Um, they're very bad, unfortunately. Um, Alan Simpson says, I've enjoyed all the Meister reviews, which ones you'd like most? It's a difficult thing to say because um, most of the Maestros I drove didn't have power steering. It was quite a rare option on them. And certainly most of the ones that my grandfather had didn't have power steering. I was going to drive a Maestro with power steering, but that was back in probably August. But it, unfortunately, that didn't happen. Um, so really it's not a, not a particularly easy thing to, um, to say unless I've actually driven one with power steering. All, all of them are driven with, with being without power steering. 
Um, some of them are, are more awkward than others. It's it's difficult, really. Um, I've driven so many of them now. I've driven sort of five, I think. Mr. Coleman has just had a call about the uh, new arrival for his fleet next week. I think those of you who aren't uh, familiar with um, Mr. Coleman's channel, Rubbish Mechanic, had to go have a look because uh, it's a most entertaining channel. Uh, AC says a blog on the Ford Transit Mark 4 and Mark 5. When you say Mark 4 or Mark 5, which one do you actually mean? Because lots of people name them in different ways. I actually, where we live, is very, very close to the old trans transit plant in Swaveling, where they made them until 2013. Maybe not the best place, because Swaveling is less than a mile from the sea. So, that turned into rust. 87 till 2000. Yes, I... There's a code for them. I would call that a mark three, four or five, um, if it were me, but I do know the one you mean. I'm not massively familiar with them, to be honest. I mean, I, I did travel a lot of them when I was, when I was younger. I just, I'm not, not really sure sort of what exactly I would um, say about them because I don't really know an awful lot. The sort of person who know actually about that would be Mr. Coleman because he's, he's, he's owned quite a few of them. Um, the only thing I can sort of do is actually probably show you where they were built because it's very close to here. Um, yeah, Spinara engines and all kinds of kinds of things, smiley faces and all that sort of stuff. Yes, yes, I, yes, I remember those. I remember when the smiley faces came out, which would have been 95, 96. And the Banara engine I gather is very good. Uh, Carl Ravioli says thoughts on Renault Velsatis. I'm not sure I have too much really to say about that, but other people haven't said. Uh, on um, Ian Seabrook's channel, there's there's um, a review of one of those, and there's also one on um, Matty's Cars, who's a friend of the channel. Um, I don't really have a lot more to say about them, really. Uh, Peter Headley says, the generation of transit with the, the forbidden fuel engine, which we don't talk about, which you heard before you saw them. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly the kind of Mark 3s, the early ones are very loud. Uh, Chipper says, I hope you and your lady wife are a bit better. Yes, we're a lot better than we were. Although I'm not going to run this live stream beyond about half past seven because it is, um, it's a bit tiring doing this. Um... It's very nice of, you, of, of all of you to come along at very short notice. I mean, and, um, we've had some very lovely messages from people who I've never met in real life, which is always a very strange thing um, to sort of know that people who, who are around actually do sort of care a bit more than just watching sort of car videos. That's, that's very nice of you. Very nice. I'm not really sure I've said enough of that to all of you. Um, but I'm very appreciative of it. It has, it has been very helpful. Um, what is greater, says Alan Simpson, the love of the beige leather interior or the dislike for the bidden fuel? The thing about the beige leather interior thing is that I, I don't know actually when that sort of came. Probably within the first year of the channel. I didn't realise, I don't think, until a little bit later that that was something that I have a preference of mine with these sort of things like Rovers and Jaguars to have that in dark blue or dark green. So with Forbidden Fuel, that's, that's, it's something that actually has been on the channel for sort of the very first video and in my professional work sourcing cars for people um, 
it was directly affecting me because I remember buying a, a car in 2015 with a forbidden fuel engine and where I was living at the time which is um, just on the south west London border with Surrey I heard about the Archelo emission zone and the car I just bought was devaluing by £200 a month because of the introduction of the Archelo emission zone and because of that not because I hated car that I had but because of this legislation that the mayor of London is, was bringing in and even then four years hence he said that the ultra emission zone was going to be expanded and it's being expanded on Monday I'm, at, I'm not I'm not joking this is like beyond where the channel started and it's taken four years and we're there so the first video we made was the car that I bought to replace the Bidden Fuel one. And uh, Mr. Franks, who is my Tweed Jacket Reviews co-founder, who a lot of you probably don't even know these days, but um, he's actually on the chat um, this evening. Um, I was driving around Epsom where I used to live. Um, and uh, I was, you know, I I prepared the uh, uh, the list of engines to talk about in the car, and I just remember forgetting completely blankly what the power outputs of those forbidden fuel engines were. Just totally, totally forgot. And of course, being in the profession that I am, and advising people in and around London what cars to buy. I just suddenly said, rather than retake the whole thing, I just said, there are 1.6 or 1.4 diesel engines, but we don't talk about those. And after we'd done that take, I just thought, that's it. That's it. That's going to be, that's going to be what we'll always say. And that's it, really. Um, anyway, sorry, a bit of a tangent here. Um, Roy really Joe says, I saw you at Festival of the Unexceptional, I don't want to come over to say I was filming. So I'm sorry about that, six parts on that day, it was pretty crazy. Um, Morris Mechanic says, glad to have you with the new exhaust. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good, it's, it's getting me better fuel economy as well, it's amazing. Um, DBT says, who doesn't love a beige leather interior? Um, some people don't like them. Mr. Coleman's not very fond of them. Um, Carl Ravioli says, I think everyone here loves cream champagne made leather interior of wood. Yes, we do like that. Uh, Chippers says, do you think classic car ownership will be possible in 30, 40 years' time with new um, green, green road policies? I don't know. It, it's, it's too far in the future, unfortunately. I don't, I don't really know. Um, Mr. Franks is on, is on the uh, live stream this evening. Says there's Winchester Tones. Yes, sir. That's where I was born. Uh, good to see him here. Yes, sir. Mr. Frank is a wonderful chap. Most of True Jacket reviews that has been done, not all of it, but most of it, um, has his influence in it, and he's very good at it. Uh, I, I don't celebrate Halloween, I'm afraid, so we'll just skip over that question. Uh, I'm signed from Lot 76 Cars. Uh, beige leather for material, it looks warmer and luxurious and black. Uh, strange, I know, but we won't have a chance to tick the box to beige. Yes, I think that's probably what it is. Um, Mr. Simpson, I think you've helped a lot of us through a difficult time, kept going through lockdown. I'm actually very, very thankful I don't see you in your suffering. Well, it's, you know, it's just one of these things we've had. Have one of these things where um, a lot of people have been a lot worse off than we have. I've got somebody I know who's had uh, the, the long COVID version and I don't know how long it's been, a year maybe, and it's it's not nice. Um, well, anyway, this is this is a car channel, so we'll skip over that thing. Um, Andrew Jenner says, what's the fastest you've ever driven? Um, there's two answers to that, sort of, really. The one 
was uh, in December 2018, and you can actually see it on the channel. I drove the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10 and the Subaru Impreta WRX STI on a track. It's actually on the channel. It's about Christmas 2018 I released those videos, and um, the instructor was just getting me to drive it faster and faster and faster. The Mitsubishi Evolution 10 was absolutely amazing. Very, very, very good car. Um, to drive quite feels quite quite safe and everything. Subaru was not as good apart from the fact it had a six-speed gearbox uh, That was quite fast second sort of answer to that is Again around the same time, I think it was actually just um, Just uh, kind of about later in that month I had to get to the airport in Germany very quickly and uh, we had this hire car, it was a Renault Megane Sports Tour, I think a 1.2 engine. And uh, I drove on the outer barn, so well within the, the sort of legal limits of things, at 110 miles an hour um, to get to the airport, and I made it. It's absolutely crazy, didn't have time to put the petrol in, so got fined for it, but... That was crazy. I'm not doing that again. There's a hurry. Um, Robert Joe says, for my first cars after a Row 25 base lever interior, but they're exceptionally rare, yes. Um, lever interiors on 25s are very rare. Um, the run-out models, which were the GLI and GSI, both had lever interiors, um, but they are difficult to find. Uh, Chambers 101 says, good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Um, we'll probably be finishing, unfortunately, you know couple of minutes because I've said it's going to last half an hour so I'm afraid it's not going to go um, on much longer which I do apologize but uh, I haven't quite got the stamina that um, so I normally would do uh, since having had this virus which isn't very pleasant and the BL lover has just turned up as well um, yeah, so I'm, I'm afraid I am going to have to call it an, a night there. Um, thank you everybody for joining in. I do apologise if uh, it's not quite been the same as uh, these things used to be. I think most of you will um, kind of know the reasons for that. But um, we'll have a video go up, I think, on Monday. I've still got some... Um, reviews that I filmed in September that have yet to be released so we'll, we'll see one of that and then I'm going to try to get back to actually producing some new content next week so um, just I'll just take a, a quick, quick question here from DBT I'm looking to get a 94940 nine for something older for my first car um, if you look on the no budget reviews playlist you'll see there's a Volvo 940 on there so you can have a look at that um, Simon from Lot76 Cars says, uh, thank you for the live chat, take care, thank you, that's fine. Um, Alan Simpson says, hope you can do the cover to the shuffling area, AC in person. Yes, yeah, so I'll have to get my tickets sorted out and then I'll be there for those three days, so be okay. So thank you ever so much indeed um, for watching. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below. And uh, hopefully the next time you'll see things it'll be a little bit a uh, little bit different um, yes hopefully I can get my tickets sorted and everything um, but yes thank you